Hello, my name is Armin and I'm a product specialist at Notch. In this tutorial, we'll build a fire simulation and we will encapsulate it in a sphere. So let's get started. First, I'm going to build a new layer. So I'm pressing Ctrl Shift N and I'm going to call this field. Before I add any notes to the scene, I'm going to make sure that my frame rate is locked to 30 by 30. Now we have a clean graph, we can get started. First of all, I'm going to add a field root and primitive emitter and a field renderer. Anything and everything concerning fields will be connected to the field root as it is a rather big system of its own. So it has a color code and a root of its own. So if I press space now and start to simulate, I will see this circle available for me. Now, the reason why we see the circle is because fields are considered to be 2D by default. As you see, we have three parameters with height and depth. Depth is set only to one. But if we match these numbers on all three uh, aspects with height and depth, you will see that we're getting a coin now. Now we have depth. Fields exist only in bound boxes that are provided by field root or by external bounding box. So in the primitive emitter, I'll change this from circle to a torus. And as I hit space, I see it's updating. Great. Uh, in this case, I think I want this torus to be smaller and facing upwards. So let's, let's make some alterations. First of all, I'm going to turn it. I'm hitting home, so I'm resetting the playhead. Right, that's good. I'm going to make it smaller. So 0 0.5 on all three axes. I'm going to hit home to reset again. Okay, perfect. Now let's double check what is the size of our bounding box. I see that I have quite a bit of space. I can definitely pull this primitive emitter a little bit lower. That seems to be about right. Okay, let's make some alterations to the field root and let's add some effectors. First of all, in the field root, I'm going to choose to uppress density field and I'm going to choose densities and temperatures. As soon as I do that, I already see that there's something happening. There is a little bit of an updraft. There is motion upwards. Now, it doesn't look impressive or interesting at all, and that is because we're missing effectors. First effector that I want to add here would be fluid effector. So, let's restart the playhead. It already looks a little bit more interesting. Now we have something that has updraft and can start to, to be shaped into a simulation. So in the fluid effector, I think I'm going to reduce the simulation speed. And I'm going to increase the vorticity confinement scale to something like 3. Vorticity confinement scale adds swirls to uh, this uh, simulation. So it basically adds a bit more dynamic, makes it much more believable. I think this is a good start, although it's very hard to read what's going on in this simulation because there is no shading. So the next node I want to bring to the graph is field shadows. Now with the help of field shadows, we will be able to shade our simulation. So as soon as I connect it to the field root, I already see results. I think I'm going to change the color. And I think I'm going to give a little bit more fade power. Temperature and density, and I think I'm going to give a color to the top of the simulation, to the actual smoke. Right, we can probably push it further, and we will, but for now, this is okay. Uh, one thing to note is high dynamic range. As soon as we add that, we see the simulation starts to look much better. So, we have fluid effector. Let's add several more. I think next one I want to bring in is the turbulence effector. I'm going to press Control R. So Control R is a smart shortcut. It will connect to the closest appropriate route. In this case, field route. I see turbulence is taking effect. Uh, I'm not necessarily happy with the way it's animating. So in the turbulence effector, I think I'm going to reduce the velocity amount to something like 0 0.2. And I'm going to increase the noise scale to 8. This looks a little bit better. This looks a little bit more exciting. Right, I think we can add yet one more effector. In this case, curl noise effector. Again, I'm pressing Control R. 
Now, this is a little bit too harsh, so I'm going to reduce the numbers on the fluid simulation speed and noise size. I'm doing approximate numbers now, and I think I'm going to go for a bigger coral noise amount, so I'm going to add 50 there. And I'm just tweaking numbers as I go to see the results much faster and restarting the playhead. Let's see if we can have a bit bigger noise size. That starts to look nice. So let's flesh it out. 0 0.15 and 0 0.45 on the noise scale here, on the noise size. All right, let's add one more effector. In this case, the next effector we're going to bring in is going to be a primitive uh, collision effector. As you see, we have two options, 3D object collision and primitive. In this case, we're using primitive because we want to encapsulate everything in a sphere. Now, if you have an external 3D model that you want to use, you will probably have to grab a 3D object collision and pipe that 3D object to the first input here in the bottom. So let's connect a primitive collision to the field root. As you see, it came in as a circle. Uh, in this case, we want this to be a sphere. And when I start the simulation, I see that it's not necessarily working as I intended. That is because I would probably need to invert the shape so that the fields could exist inside of the sphere instead of outside. Great, this is working. I think the next step would be adding a sphere and making sure that it's see-through. So let's build a glass. So I'm grabbing shape 3D. I see it coming into the center of the graph. In this case, the default is set to diameter. I'm going to change it to radius. And radius is just as big as our primitive collision effector. That's great. That's exactly what we wanted. So we will need a material, uh, in this case, a glass material. I'm going to connect it to the shape 3D. Nothing really happened because we have no lighting in the scene just yet. I'm going to add skylight. I see that there's some changes kicking in. And it's hashed out red, indicating that the third rendering must be on for this to work. Now, since we will build a glass, we will need ray tracing as well. So I'm enabling that too. And we will need some kind of an environment image. So I'm going to grab environment image from the node list and I'm going to grab a HDR from the resources. So HDR is just an unwrapped 360 picture of your environment. So I'm going to pipe in this 360 picture to the environment image and environment image to the skylight. Okay, we're getting there. Now let's make sure that our skylight is ray traced and omnidirectional. I'd say we might as well make sure that the sky dome is visible too. Okay, not too bad. Now, we probably need an extra node. I will grab a path tracer. So as soon as I add path tracer, I see that I'm producing glass. Now, the only issue is that the field system is not talking to the path tracer. Uh, I can fix that by connecting those two together. If I hover over the inputs here in the bottom, I see that the second one indicates fields. That's exactly where I'm going to connect the field root. And there we are. Now we are producing a fire simulation inside of the sphere. Uh, however, I see that I have a little bit of noise going on, so I think I can fix that by adding a refinement node. So I'm going to grab RT refinement. I'm going to restrict the refinement steps to one, and I'm going to enable the AI denoiser. Now, AI denoiser is a very nice and powerful tool, uh, and the one that I'm going to refer to now is NVIDIA Optics. Uh, obviously, this uh, this AI denoiser works only with NVIDIA cards. Cool, this starts to look quite better. I think I can add one more node to make this a little bit more smooth, uh, and that would be temporal anti-aliasing. So I'm going to grab that, connect it to the root. Yep, that indeed helped. All right, I think we're done. Thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one.